Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So like most days of spoiler season, I am up far too early this morning, but I've got my cup of coffee and I'm ready to go. And early yesterday morning, we got a very exciting spoiler with Augur of Autumn, so if you didn't see that early morning episode, make sure you check it out. And the spoilers just kept coming yesterday, and the day ended with Moonvale region, a mythic wheel dragon. Yeah, you heard me write all those things in one sentence. But this morning, the main reason that I am up so early, well, actually, it's because my dog woke me up uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, but then after that, I checked my phone, which I should not have done because then I saw old stick fingers and this thing is broken. And yeah, I could not stop thinking about it and I could not get back to sleep. So here we are. So what exactly is this card with this really strange name and why is it so broken? Well, let's jump into it to find out. First off, a big thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translation on this card. Old Stick Fingers is a star star horror that cost X black green. It says, when you cast this spell, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards. Put all creature cards revealed this way into your graveyard and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Old Stick Fingers power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So yeah, this commander can be absolutely disgusting with the right build around it. Now, obviously you can build this in a more casual way where you just say, hey, I've got a bunch of creatures in this deck and you know, whatever I hit, great, I get it into my graveyard and then old stick fingers can be really big based on the number of creatures in my graveyard. But obviously this commander can be built in an extremely broken way. In the right deck, this is basically an X spell that is a creature tutor for your graveyard. I mean, this card is basically like an Entomb, or actually more so maybe like a Buried Alive, but as a commander. Entomb says, search your library for a card, put that card in your graveyard, then shuffle your library. And Buried Alive says, search your library for up to three creature cards, put them in your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Again, if you limit your deck to just a certain amount of creatures, when you pay that exact amount of mana into that X, you are guaranteed to hit those creatures and get them right into your graveyard. And of course, there are some incredibly broken things that you can do once you're set up in that way. I mean, if you've got a two creature combo and we'll go over one of those here in a bit, simply by casting Victimize, you're gonna sacrifice your commander to get those two creatures and combo off to win. And obviously in Golgari, you've got access to plenty of ways to reanimate creatures, including some mass reanimation effects like Wake the Dead and Living Death. So again, essentially with this commander, just get those creatures into your graveyard, cast one of these spells and combo off and win. And obviously since you're in green or actually maybe more so black, you've got access to some really fast mana like Dark Ritual. So with a high powered build, this commander could go off incredibly fast with the right hand. It definitely wouldn't surprise me if a commander like this broke into CEDH. Though I am most definitely not an expert in competitive EDH, so take that with a grain of salt. Regardless, let's move on and I'll just give some quick examples of some potential combos that you can utilize with this commander. So first up, there's the lovely Micaeus the Unhallowed and his buddy Triskelion. This is literally just a two creature combo, so again, if you just get these in your graveyard and then cast Victimize, sacrifice your commander to get these, congratulations, you win. Micaeus says, other non-human creatures you control get plus one plus one and have undying. And Triskelion is a 1-1 one, one construct that enters the battlefield with three plus plus one counters on it, and by removing a counter from it, you ping something for one. So the combo works like this. Triskelion is not a human, obviously, it's a construct, so it gets plus plus one and undying. So it's essentially a 2-2 that has three counters on it, and you can remove those counters for damage. 
With that first counter, you remove it and ping anything, most likely an opponent's face. With the other two counters that you remove, you ping Triskelion itself. Again, with that Anthem from Machaeus, it is a 2-2, so you need to ping it twice to take it out. And again, because of Machaeus, Triskelion also has Undying. Which again means that when a creature with Undying dies, if it had no plus one plus one counters on it, return to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus plus one counter on it. So it comes back into play with another counter on it, and obviously it also enters with three counters from its own ETB. So again, always saving two counters to ping itself, you can utilize the other counters to ping again whatever you would like. Which again, most likely would be your opponent's faces. So yeah, this is a two card infinite damage combo that again, your commander can essentially tutor for you in your graveyard and you can get out with a lot of things. I mean, with the right opening hand with this commander, you could turn one combo with these cards. Obviously, you need a ton of fast mana to do so, but yeah, it is most definitely possible in these colors with this commander and with this combination. Now, there are plenty of combos to pick from in these colors, and this is probably one of the most efficient ones, but let me just highlight one other one really quick. And this time, we've got a combo of three creatures, and that one revolves around the Gitrog Monster, Sedisi Undead Vizier, and Scourge Familiar. So again, in this deck, you'd only be including these three creatures, and for that X mana value, you'd be paying three, obviously. Regardless, once you get them into your graveyard, and you mass reanimate them all out at the same time, some fun things can happen. The Gitrog Monster says, whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, draw a card. And then Sidisi Undead Vizier has Exploit, and whenever it exploits a creature, you may search your library for a card, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. And then Scourge Familiar says, discard a card, add black. So essentially, the combo works like this. When these come into play, you're actually going to have Sidisi exploit itself. So you sacrifice it and you can search your library for any card and put it in your hand. And the card that you're going to go get is Dakmore Salvage. Dakmore Salvage is a simple land that enters the battlefield tapped and taps for a black, but it also has Dredge too. And Dredge means that if you would draw a card, instead you can put exactly two cards in the top of your library in your graveyard, and if you do, you turn this card from your graveyard to your hand, otherwise you draw a card. Basically, the combo works like this. With Skirt Familiar's ability, you discard Dakmore Salvage to add a black to your mana pool. Dakmar Salvage hits your graveyard, and the Gitrog Monster sees that. So because they land hit your graveyard again from anywhere, you draw a card. But instead of drawing that card, you're going to replace that draw by dredging two for Dakmar Salvage. So you don't draw that card, you mill two, and then Dakmar Salvage goes back to your hand. When you milled two, if you milled any lands into your graveyard, you're drawing cards equal to the amount of lands that you milled. And of course, you can keep repeating this over and over and over again. Now, obviously, at a certain point, you would mill yourself, but there are ways around that. There are plenty of ways to shuffle your graveyard into your library, and there are even things of flashback that can help you too in case something's in your graveyard that you need. Even if you have to eventually stop this loot for a sorcery speed spell, you can. Then you can just pick it back up and keep going. I mean, once you even just hit another reanimation spell, you can just cast that, get Sidisi back, exploit it again, and then tutor for whatever card you need. So yeah, although unlike a lot of Gitrog monster decks, you can't shuffle tight and loop this, you can still win in a lot of ways. Regardless, if you're not looking to build a broken deck with this commander and looking to combo off with it, there are still some really exciting things that you can do with it. First up, you might want to utilize creatures that actually want to be in your graveyard with things like Brawn and Phil. Brawn says as long as it's in your graveyard and you control a forest, creatures you control have trample. And Phil says as long as it's in your graveyard and you control a swamp, creatures you control have swamp walk. So again, if you just want to dump a ton of creatures in your graveyard, these can make your commander even deadlier. Or maybe you want to get some dredge creatures in your graveyard like Olgari Grave Troll. Again, a dredge creature can help you mill even more cards in your graveyard and help your commander out. Or you can get something in your graveyard like Hogak, which you can actually cast from your graveyard with Convoke or Delve. Or how about a creature like a Blood Gas where you can actually just get it back? It has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Blood Gas from your graveyard to the battlefield. Of course, you can also utilize cards like Sir Conrad, Kessid Cage Breakers, and Spider Spawning. Sir Conrad the Grim punishes your opponents for whenever creatures hit the graveyard in a multitude of ways. It says whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. Basically, if you mill a bunch of creatures into your graveyard, Sir Conrad's going to have a lot of fun pinging all your opponents. And then maybe you mass reanimate them out to ping them even further, and then maybe you sacrifice them to ping them even further than that. Next up, Kessig Cage Breaker says when it attacks, you create a 2-2 Green Wolf creature token that's tapped and attacking for each creature card in your graveyard. So again, if you get a ton of creatures in your graveyard, then you start attacking with this, you're going to be making a massive amount of wolves. Or you can make a massive amount of spiders with spider spawning. 
It says create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach for each creature card in your graveyard, and it's got flashback for a 6 and a black. So again, there are plenty of ways to take advantage of getting a lot of creatures in your graveyard. I mean, again, even a simple spell like Twilight's Call can just get all your creatures back. Well, it gets everyone's back too, but you're going to have even more than them, so... Yeah, there's a lot of powerful things that you can do with a deck built around this commander. But now that we've talked about some ways to build around old stick fingers, and I'm probably never going to get used to saying that name, let's talk about some commanders that actually might want this in the 99. First up, how about Tasker the Golden Fang? It has Delve and Pay 2 Simic Simic, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, then return a non-land card of an opponent's choice from your graveyard to your hand. So, Tasker decks love filling their graveyards and getting a lot of powerful things back. So if you've got a Tasker deck built around a lot of creatures, well, you can just get a ton of creatures into your yard and then really utilize them with Tasker. And speaking of utilizing things out of your graveyard, how about Muldrotha the Gravetide? Muldrotha says during each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. So again, fill your graveyard and then utilize your creatures as you see fit. Or how about a mass reanimation commander like Nethroy Apex of Death? It says whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if you get a ton of low power or no power creatures in your graveyard, well, Nethroy can get them all back for you. And then, of course, there's Caridor Ghost Chieftain, which is going to cost one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard, and it says during each of your turns, you may cast one creature card from your graveyard. So again, by getting creatures into your graveyard with old stick fingers, you're going to be reducing Caridor's cost, and then Caridor can help you cast those creatures. And finally, how about Gerard Golgari Lichlord? It's going to get plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard, and by paying one black green, you can sacrifice another creature, and each opponent loses life to sacrifice creature's power. So old stick fingers can help fuel not only its own power, but Gerard's as well. And then by sacrificing old stick fingers, you're going to be draining your opponents for a ton. But now as this episode's coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on old stick fingers. Again, this commander can easily be built in an extremely broken way. It's essentially an entomb, or again, maybe more so a buried alive in your command zone. With the right builder on this commander, you can quickly get the right creatures into your graveyard and combo off in no time. Now again, obviously you don't have to build this commander in a broken way. I just know that if I see this on the other side of the table, I'm going to be pretty wary as to what the other player is doing with old stick fingers. So make sure you've got your graveyard interaction in your deck, especially when going up against this commander. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.